Hey, it's Mike over at FisherAssOff.com and today what I'm talking about is I'm really just answering a bunch of questions about, well, lots of things. When you're bass fishing, getting the right rod and reel. I'm going to call this the ultimate guide to picking the right rod and reel combo for bass fishing. Because if you're bass fishing, me, you know that there's a lot of different scenarios. Are you fishing with crankbaits? Are you fishing with worms? Are you fishing top water? Are you uh, pitching frogs in the super heavy cover? You know, there's a lot of different rod actions and a lot of different um, scenarios because bass uh, basically live anywhere that there's fresh water. So, you know, you think about it, sometimes you might be catching them in a little pond, sometimes you might be catching them in a wide open lake, sometimes you might be catching them in a drainage pond that looks like it's nothing but weeds and algae. So they can be just about anywhere. And the reason for this video is to basically save you a bunch of heartache because if you go into like, I don't know, Bass Pro Shops or someplace like that, and you go to the guy and you're like, hey man, I need a new bass rod reel combo. Uh, what should I get? Well, you know, the guy wants to sell you a bunch of stuff, right? So he's gonna be like, well, you tell me. What, uh, what do you fish? You, you know, how do you fish? Oh, you know, well, um, do you ever use crankbaits? And he's gonna go, you'll be like, well, yeah, everybody uses crankbaits on the bass fit. Well, yeah, I'm gonna need to get you a specific rod and reel for that because you're gonna need the right gear ratio, I need the right rod action and all that. So, yeah, I'll have to get you that one too. Do you ever, um, do you ever like fish Texas rig or Carolina rig stuff? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get you a, a rod and reel for that too. You know, that's that's different gear ratio is gonna be best for that. Well, what about spinner baits? You ever do spinner baits? Yeah. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We might have to look at another rod and reel combo for that too. Uh, what about you ever fishing like heavy cover, like with jigs or you know punching jigs or frogs or anything like that, and that real thick vegetation? Well, yeah. Yeah. I want to do that. He's like, yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to look at a rod for that too, you know? I mean, there's a reason why all those pros, when you watch them on TV, have like 10 rod and reel sets there. I mean, you need to have specific, uh, you know, perfect specifications for specific uh, areas you're fishing. Like, it's a bunch of BS because you can get away. I'm gonna show you how to get this kind of dialed in where you can get away with fishing with two rods and fish all those different areas. You have three if you wanna be hardcore. And you gotta remember, those pros, they have to have that dialed in just right. Why? They got millions of bucks on the line and endorsements and prize money and all this other stuff. Yeah, you don't have millions of dollars on the line. Now, if you're a tournament fisherman and you can make money doing this, well, maybe this isn't the video for you. You might wanna, you know, because you're probably gonna wanna have five or six different rods dialed in perfectly. Because if you miss one fish that you would have caught normally, you might lose your prize money. So this is for the person that loves bass fishing, bass fish on the weekends, they don't bass fish for a living, they just love it, but they don't want to spend a ton of money having 16 rods on their boat. Okay, that's who this is for, so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and explain here, all right? First thing I'm gonna explain is rod action. What does that mean? So when you're sitting there and you're looking at that and it's real confusing to you, just remember, fast action. I mean, I tried to draw this, you know, basically. So a fast action rod is going to have a bend at the top. It's going to be the top third, and that's going to be considered a fast action rod. These are heavy rods, so these are stiffer rods for really yanking fish out of um, cover or underwater structures or something like that usually. You're going to need a stiffer rod, and fast action means the rod goes like that, poof, and it straightens up faster than a rod that bends all the way over. So this would be a slow action rod. See how it bends over in almost a perfect semicircle? Well, that is gonna take longer to straighten up because it's bent over further. That's a slow action rod. That's how they, that's how they judge these things. So this one has a lot more give, a lot less backbone. So something that's super slow like that is gonna be a medium, action rod, you know, light, you know, medium action rod, slow medium action rod that's going to bend like that, right? 
So you'll notice when you go to Walmart or whatever, the generic rods, you're never going to see a slow rod there and you're never going to see an extra fast rod there. You're almost always going to see medium, medium heavy, heavy. And there's a reason for that because you just don't need to be super specific unless there's money on the line and then it makes a little bit of a difference so it's worth, worth that extra little percentages of gain you get from having those specific uh, rods and perfect specs for whatever you're fishing. So that's all that means. So a slow action rod, basically it's going to flex three quarters of the way down the rod and the uh, fast action is just going to flex on the top third. Okay, so that's, that's what you're looking at. So slower action rods that are going to bend like that, it's going to be a medium action rod, something like that. Okay, now what are the pros? Why, why would you care? Why do you, why do you want, who cares about the action? Well, there's a reason. So the pros of fast action is you can feel what's going on at the end of your line because the, the rod itself is taking less of the vibrations, taking less of that with you. So you got a stiff rod, it's all the vibrations coming right through, whereas uh, when it's bent over more, there's more vibration not going to your, to your arm, so you can't feel it, basically. So you have, you have better sensitivity with a fast action rod if, when you're doing that. And obviously you have better hook setting power. So, you know, it's like trying to set up, uh, you know, hook, hook of fish with a, with a piece of hickory or with, you know, a willow or a cattail. Obviously the uh, hickory is going to have a lot more hook setting ability than the cattail or whatever that is. And that's because it's stiff. It, only the top is really given. Everything else is backbone in it, so there's a lot more backbone. So that makes sense. And when are you going to need more hook setting power? Well, it's when you're fishing with those, um, uh, with a single hook usually, when you think about it. So you're, you're pitching a jig, you're flipping a jig up in some brush. Well, you got stuff in there, you know, the bass is in there, you got to be able to feel them. Oh, you got to get a bite. Well, now you got a fish on there. Well, how do you get them out through all the sticks in the grass or whatever? Right? So you, you're going to need a heavier rod, basically. Fast to rod. However you want to look at it. So any of those, punch jigs, frogs, anything you're fishing that heavy cover, uh, you don't want a rod that's going to give. You want to get that fish hooked hard and then get them out of that stuff and that's when you actually need a higher gear ratio too. But we're going to cover that in the next, next part of this. So I'm going to erase this. And we're going to just start with a whole nother part about all the, all the gear ratios for all the different types of lures and such. But for now, we're just going to cover rods. Okay. So better hook setting power, better, better sensitivity. Now, slow action. Why would you want a slow action then? Well, because you can get better casting distance because you can use the spring in the, in the uh, rod to actually catapult your, your, your lure further. So they cast better, that's, that's one, and less hook setting power. So the opposite of this, well, why would you want less hook setting power? Well, because there are times, you know, when you're fishing with treble hooks and things like that, you got a bunch of different hooks there, usually smaller uh, diameter too, you don't really want to you rip that fish as hard as you can, like you, like you have to. Uh, when you're fishing in some heavy cover or something like that because you tear them out and you open a hole and then the bass gets off because you, you have too much power on them. Those, when you're out there reeling, as you're reeling it in, boom, they're hooking themselves half the time. You're, oh, wait, there's a bass on there. They're, they're already hooked. So a lot of the treble hook type of scenarios that you're fishing, you know, with those, you really don't need a heavy, fast, a rod, you can get away with a medium or a medium heavy rod, so a slower action rod anytime you're doing that. You know, jerk bait, same thing. You know, whatever it is you're doing with, with a treble hook, chances are you're going to get away with a uh, slower action rod. So you're probably going to have a medium or medium heavy type rod. Okay, slow action, medium, all right, rod length. All right, well, why would you want a shorter rod versus a longer rod? Well, with the longer the rod, the further your casting distance is going to be, right? And you're going to get more leverage when you're trying to hook up on a fish. Because obviously if you're pulling from a higher spot than a lower spot, you know, it's the whole physics things we learned in high school. Well, that's going to have to be better for doing the leverage 
on the fish down there, getting the hook set power to the actual end of the line. But a shorter rod is going to give you more accuracy. And let's say you're um, your kayak bass fisherman and stuff, and you're all up under trees, pitching and skipping things underneath trees. Well, if you got an eight foot rod, it's going to get caught up more than a six foot rod. I mean, it's just simple stuff again. You know, there's less to go wrong with that when you're when you're looking at uh, you know in a tight quarters or you're just getting somewhere real close or you're you're in a kayak and fishing in kind of heavy cover or whatever it is so there's pros and cons to everything but basically when you look at bass rods the length of them they're usually say let's go with six and a half feet to eight feet sure give or take four or five inches on either side but that's pretty much your range so what i'm going to show you now on this next part that i'm going to cover is all about the matching these rods with the reels with the right gear ratios and everything to make it perfect for whatever that scenario is a crankbait you like crankbaits or you like fishing heavy cover or you you just like fishing top water or you just like fishing worms because if unless you're a pro unless there's money on the line i'm going to show you how you could just mix and match these different rods and reels and get away with only needing you know maybe two rods to cover catch tons of fish so you're on the boat and the guy next to you is laughing he's like ha you got two rods i'm gonna catch so many more bass than you and you're like oh no he's got 10 rods you got two rods but you got the right rods and you know how to fish them so that's what we're going to cover next it's going to happen here right in a couple seconds i'm going to fill this uh, whiteboard up with all kinds of more information about the reels and uh, that's why it's called the ultimate guide. I'm going to try to cover every question you're going to have about your rod and reel combos for bass fishing. All right, so now what I'm going to talk about are the optimal gear ratios and actions and rod lengths all kind of put together and just explain how it works and the difference between you know, weekend warrior type of fisherman and someone that's hardcore fishing bass tournaments or a professional bass fisherman too. And what all the different gear ratios really mean, okay? Uh, and that's one of the first things I wanna cover is really the gear ratio. I mean, what, what does it even mean if it says, you know, six point something to one, right? What does that actually mean? Okay, so a gear ratio let's say that you had a gear ratio of 5.3 to 1 what does that mean well that just means that your your spool oh gosh my nose is going to turn 5.3 times for every one handle turn so the spool itself is going to spin 5.3 to 1 every time you do a complete 360 degree rotation that's all that means okay that's all gear ratio means so when you're looking at all these different things is six point this or seven point this to one that's all it means is that's how much line it's going to pull in per rotation 360 degree rotation that's all that means just just so you know okay let's talk about crankbaits and the action and the rod size and the gear ratios. Well, um, you know, when you're fishing with a crankbait, you don't really need a super stiff rod, right? First of all, you're probably crankbaiting, you know, bouncing off some rocks or some bottom or something like that. And you probably don't need a lot of backbone most of the time. I mean, super heavy backbone where you have to pull a fish plus five pounds of weeds with you like you do in other fishing circumstances for these bass. So that's why a medium to medium heavy rod is really the, the action you need. And you know, there's all kinds of different rod sizes, but really what I'm trying to teach you with this whole video is how you can consolidate and just use a kind of medium range for lots of different fishing scenarios. So I'm just gonna say seven foot rod. You know, some people might argue a seven two is better. Some people might argue a six ten rod is better and there might be valid arguments but again we're trying to make it so you don't need 10 fishing rods to go out and catch some bass effectively okay so i'm gonna go with seven right and as far as a gear ratio you know a slower gear ratio 
is going to be preferable. Okay, so it's pulling in less line per rotation is what that means than something that's say a 7 to 1 is going to pull in more line per rotation. Okay, so that's considered maybe a slow reel. Alright, and this 5.3 to 1 uh, that I, scenario that I was given, so that's Kevin Van Dam. He's won millions and millions of dollars fishing with crankbaits and he's, uh, that's his recommendation for, for a, uh, the actual gear ratio for, for a uh, crankbait reel. But again, you're not Kevin Van Dam and you're not, you don't need it so narrowed in as that. So I'm just gonna cover some of these averages that different people, different pros recommend for the gear ratios to uh, be specific for a specific type of bait, okay? So now, here's another thing. Spinning reels. You know, most spinning reels, in fact, are somewhere between a 5.1 and a 6 point, well, 6 point something. So 5 to 1 to 6 to 1, let's just call it that. It's going to be their range um, for spinning reels. You know, bait casters are, are, have a higher range. So they're, say, you know, go from 5 to 1 to 9 to 1 for, for bait casting reels. But anyways, so, you know, with, with, when you're fishing with lighter uh, lures, it, you know, there's advantages that spinning reels have over bait casting reels. Uh, the ones I can think of right offhand is they're super easy to use, right? You don't have to put your thumb, you don't have to worry about backlashes and bird nests. Um, they're much better at casting lighter lures. So when you're using really micro type bass lures and stuff, a spinning, a spinning uh, reel will work better than a bait casting reel. And you can obviously, if you're lefty or righty, you know, because almost the whole world's set up for righty, if you need to switch the handle from one side to the other, you just unscrew it and switch the handle. So that makes it pretty easy too. So those are the basic advantage, but bait casters are pretty much better for everything else when it comes to bass fishing for sure. Okay, I just wanted to cover that. All right, so that's crankbaits, spinnerbaits. You know, if you're looking out there and again, these pros are gonna recommend certain things and it's basically gonna be a medium to medium heavy uh, rod. It's gonna be the action, you know, somewhere, give or take a few inches on either side of seven inches. And they're gonna say a six to one gear ratio. 6 point something, so it might be 6.3. So you know what that means now. You're going to get 6.3 rotations for every one handle turn. That's what that means. And that's what they're going to say for that. All right? Frog and jig, fishing heavy cover, you know, whatever you're fishing in the super heavy cover, you know. Now this is the one exception to the rule. This is the only rod that I have, a bait casting rod that I use to fish for bass with. I use spinning reels. So, when I'm fishing in heavy cover, I have a, well mine's 7.2 and it's a 7 one to one gear ratio and it's a heavy rod. And I have 50 pound uh, braid on it too because this rod is very specific in what I use it for. I use it specifically for pitching frogs especially, I like fishing with frogs, um, over basically weed mats and just things you could not fish really anything else with. Thick lily pads and things like that. Those big huge bass are don't get caught a lot because they're in inaccessible places a lot of the times. You know, they're smarter than the dumb little bass. You know, dumb little bass get caught on the edge of this or the point of this or the whatever of this, but those big ones are hiding way back in the weeds. Like, hey, look at those dummies out there biting all that dumb stuff coming by. So to trick them into biting, a lot of times you gotta go deep in the cover. And that's why I have that rod for that specific scenario. But it could be for a punch jig scenario, that'd be a great rod for that. Um, you know, if you have your Texas rig and say you're using a, using a crawdad, something to punch through weed, anything where you're gonna not only have to pull a fish out, but you're probably gonna have to pull out five pounds of weeds with you too. So that's a specific rod and reel situation where if you're gonna fish that, you're gonna need that specific rod and reel combo. Okay, but let me get back to this other stuff. 
All right, you're fishing Carolina and Texas rig worms, okay? As long as you're not in super heavy cover, you're gonna get away with a medium heavy rod, let's say a seven foot length, give or take on either side, up to you, and a faster type of gear ratio, seven to one, seven points up to one, most likely, okay? Buzz baits, again, you're gonna need a medium heavy rod, seven foot in length, give or take, uh, and a seven to one gear ratio, you know, on either side of that, okay? And here's what I wanna cover, and here's why pro bass fishermen like high speed reels, high speed gear ratio, higher gear ratios, okay? Because they fish all day, they fish for money, they'll fish two, three day tournaments all day, every day. So they know that when they cast out there, when they don't need a lot of, uh, they don't need to get a lot of wind on there, they don't need high speed, that it's much easier to reel more slowly to reel really fast, right? So if you have a high gear ratio and you wanna slow it down for a crankbait and you're fishing a seven to one something, it's a heck of a lot easier to just reel more slowly than it is to go like this. Okay, so if you needed, if you were fishing five to one, in other words, and you needed a seven point something to one retrieval speed, you'd have to really go fast and that's very tiring. So just keep that in mind when, when I'm giving you these recommendations with these reels, is they have specific, uh, you know, I mean, think about this. This is tuned into the point three, five point three to one. Well, I'm sure that's exactly the right uh, gear ratio for that particular uh, crankbait. Now, if he has a, a, a deep diving crankbait, it's going to be probably different from a lipless crankbait, which is going to be different from a square build crankbait for the professionals because every little bit matters to them because again, they're going to lose millions if they lose that one fish or don't hook that one, catch that one fish. You're not gonna lose millions. So, sure, you can get all these specific uh, gear ratios, rod lengths and rod actions, specific for exactly that lure. But I'm telling you right now, you just don't need to unless there's money on the line. Uh, you just need a couple of rods and, and you're good to go to catch all the bass that you could ever imagine catching. Okay, so here's all these different gear ratios and everything. And when, when I was just going seven feet, the reason I was doing that is because when, when you go and you research all these different uh, recommended rod lengths from these different pros, and they're all different by the way, uh, for the most part, uh, they go from six, six and a half feet to basically eight feet, but I've kind of figured it out that seven feet is perfect for just about everything if you only want to have to buy one rod for that scenario, okay? So that's, really covering just about everything. And I'm gonna go over here to the bottom line. If you wanna just have one bass reel, get a six point something to one gear ratio. It's plenty fast, but it's plenty slow too, right? So you could just slow it down. So say it was 6.5, I don't know. Well, that's almost seven, right? You're getting close to seven. Or if you want to go to bottom of the line seven, like a just a seven one to one, you know that's that's what mine is for my uh, my my uh, heavy uh, bass outfit. You know, for fishing the heavy cover stuff, it's seven two, and it's seven one to one is my gear ratio. And that one, oh another one. If you're fishing something heavy like that, you want something with a lot of drag. Um, that one I think has 18 pounds of drag. That's a lot of drag. You don't need 18 pounds of drag. Uh, you can get away with 10. Anything with 10 or above is just fine as far as the amount of drag. I forgot to cover that, but, but okay, that's, that's another thing. 10 pounds of drag, you're fine. You're fine in just about every scenario. Just about every scenario that there is. So you can get away with a six point something gear ratio reel and a seven foot medium heavy rod and you're fine that's going to allow you to fish all of these different baits here 
except for your heavy cover. If you don't fish heavy cover, you don't need that. And you also don't need to replace all of your spinning rods. You can bring a spinning rod out there. Sure, people might point at you because, you know, mastering the, uh, the uh, bait casting reel is kind of the, the thing for, for bass fishermen, you know. If you, if you can't master a bait caster, you're not worthy of being out of the water fishing with your spinning rods. But spinning rods work just fine, just fine. So, for instance, you know, I have uh, my snook rod is that I bring for a lot of my different scenarios. This right here is my snook rod, right? It's a, a seven foot medium heavy uh, rod. And the gear ratio, what is this? This is a pen spin fisher. I think this gear ratio on here is like 6.2 to one. Yeah, I think it's 6.2 to one is the gear ratio on this thing. This thing will reel in a 20 pound snook. I'm sure it can reel in a 10 pound bass, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I'm telling you, you, you just don't need all these different rods that they're gonna pitch you when you go to the bait store or whatever. You know, you, if, you don't even need bait casting rods, really, except for this. I mean, there's just no way I would fish this scenario, the heavy cover, without a bait casting rod. I just just be too hard. They're just too efficient um, of, a, of a reel and rod combo, you know, with the good, great stiff backbone that they have and everything. So yeah, there's certain scenarios where you just flat out want to have a bait gas and reel set up, you know, you just do. And, but I'm saying if you already have a bunch of your rod and reels already, they're just spinning reels, use them, use them. You don't have to have every, you know, thing to be different for freshwater and saltwater, and let, except for that one scenario. So I hope I cleared up all of this, you know, confusion about gear ratios and fast versus slow action, medium action, and you know, what are the best reels and drags and, and, and everything like that. You just don't need 10 different combos, rod and reel combos to go bass fishing. Two, Three, you're good. Just trust me you're good and you'll catch as many bass as the guy next to you that brings 10 rods. Simple as that. So, I know it's a long video, but I wanted to cover it all at one time. Just because, you know, I get questions all the time about all these different things and what do they mean, and I just wanted to talk about it. So, I hope it helps. I hope you, you don't get scammed at the, at the, uh, Tackle shop next time you go there and you walk out of there with, uh, you know, thousand dollars worth of rods and reels. Uh, oh, that's another thing too. Before, before, before you get off, you can get a great setup for 150 bucks or less. I mean, a great setup, a great setup. In fact, in fact, my, my, um, my heavy cover uh, bait casting rod, let's see, it's a 7.2, 18 pounds of drag, it's 7 one to one gear ratio. Um, I think it was 120 bucks, 125. So anyways, you can get a great rod and reel combo for less than $150. You could spend a hell of a lot more if you'd like to, but you don't need to. So that's another thing too. You can, you can get a, a great bass fishing rod and reel combo for less than 150 bucks. There. Now I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. So, hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. Till next time, we'll see you then. All right, bye-bye.